Okay, so after getting the 250 all washed up from riding at Aerie the other day, that's all sparkling, good to go. I have to do a few things on this. And actually try that fork seal doctor thing and uh, try to get these to stop leaking because then the oil got on my rotor and then it's causing my front brakes to be really, really bad. So I'm gonna take the front wheel off, take the front pads out, um, get some sandpaper, scuff them up a little bit. Maybe that'll help. If not, I'm gonna have to buy new brake pads, contact clean to the rotor and uh, hopefully we should be good. But that's it for the 250 for the pit bike. As you guys saw, um, this thing is smoking super, super bad. It, the video didn't really show how bad it was smoking, but basically, finally have to JV weld that case up because it's leaking out of there. Do a fresh oil change on it because this thing is in dire need of an oil change, I'm sure. Try to adjust the valves because uh, they're ticking super, super loud. Maybe if you said it was the air filter, but it's not the air filter, it's definitely coming from the valves. They're definitely out of whack or whatnot, so I'll try to tighten those up. Might actually help the starting issue of it, sometimes not wanting to start um, very good. And other than that, I think, oh, I also have some uh, pod lights to throw on over here. If I open these up, maybe I'll show you guys after, but if you guys wanna check out these pod um, lights, I'll leave the link down below in the description. But there's some nice LED pod lights. I think I'm gonna give them to Ryan after I try them out on my bike. But basically, there's some uh, two little pod lights, some mounting hardware, and uh, yeah, so you get two of those, hook it up to the same wiring as the light bar, and uh, these bad boys should be pretty bright. So I'm gonna try them out on my pit bike, and then I'm probably gonna end up giving them to Ryan for his bike since I already have a light on mine. But wire them up, see how they work, and uh, help right there. But if you wanna check them out, the link's down below in the description. My main goal for right now is to uh, tackle the pit bike because I think we're gonna ride again tomorrow, and uh, I wanna make sure it's good to go for that. So first off, we're gonna jump right into it and drain this oil. Well, that oil is definitely black, and there's not much oil in it. So that's, that's a start, it's not good. Well, as you can see, there's the hole in the case. If you guys don't know, that happened, uh, I think, a couple months ago in the winter, and I just never ended up patching it up. But the only the oil only comes out when you lean the bike over. So now I'm just gonna basically just throw some JB Weld on the outside of it, and uh, hopefully it holds because it kind of cracked into this case and along with the actual case. So I really don't have any other option other than to replace the case or JB Weld it. So I'm gonna JB Weld it. oil and whatnot, I guess I'll try to fire it up. It was very, very low on oil. It maybe had, pff, look at the oil amount. So as I turn it, it's super sludgy. I don't know, maybe 200 milliliters, if that, of oil in there. And it's supposed to have 1.1 liter or one liter of uh, oil in it. So probably wasn't too healthy that it was running on like no oil pretty much and it probably all leaked out over time so yeah i guess we'll fire it up and we'll see so it fired right off first kick but listen to that tip that's definitely not healthy not healthy at all come to the other side shut off but that tick that is not good it's so loud it got way louder than the first day when it started happening riding at Ryan's house in that mud fest. But yeah, I definitely still have to adjust the valve, so I don't know what I was thinking. Now you can see how much it's smoking, kind of. That's definitely not good either, so. Let's shut this off, but it's smoking a lot. You can't really see on camera as much as if you were here in person, but it's definitely smoking. Pretty much as much as like a two-stroke kind of-ish would. I don't know, but it's definitely not supposed to smoke like that. Excess oil and whatnot? I don't know, but it definitely, it's not good. And uh, I guess that's what happens when you just um, don't check your oil. You rub the crap out of your pit bike after you mod stuff. Well, if this thing was stock, it wouldn't have this issue, but since... Once you start modifying stuff, do whatever, you're always gonna have some kind of issues, maybe, but if this was stock, I most likely wouldn't have this issue, but um, you gotta pay to play, and uh, it's part of the game. All right, well, I didn't really film the process of me taking the uh, valve cover off on the top here because it was kind of an awkward angle, but 
We'll take this off here and we should just be able to adjust it right from here. Almost thought I was gonna be able to get it out with the carb here, with the fitment to actually slide up but um, it actually worked out for once and I didn't have to take everything else off. I, pr I could take the front fender off and take the plastics off, but I don't wanna waste time. It definitely would suck if this thing blew up. It was a pretty strong bike for like a year or so if it does die on me now, but um, it had a good run, I guess you could say. It had a good run. Maybe, uh, maybe a, a brand new Calyx 110 out coming soon, possibly if this thing blows up. I don't know, hopefully not. I mean, if it happens, it happens, I guess. All right, so I fired right up. The click definitely isn't as bad anymore definitely toned down. I think this is pretty much what it was when I was original. It doesn't sound too bad now. It fired right up as it stalls out, but pretty much, I mean, the click is not nearly as bad. So I think I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Maybe adjust it a little bit more, but for the most part, big improvement. Okay, so finally getting to these lights here. It comes with both of these lights like I showed you before. It comes with all the hardware, Allen wrenches to assemble it along with um, all the mounting brackets. So um, you don't actually have to use it for say a dirt bike, you could use it pretty much for anything. Use it for a legit motorcycle, dirt bike, whatever, ATV, go-kart, whatever you want. But these lights will work um, with pretty much anything. So like I said, if you wanna check it out, the link will be down below. And uh, we'll see the quality of these once we get it all hooked up and uh, see how bright they are. Okay, so I got the first little mount all mounted up right here. Ideally, I'll have two on each side. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to put two on today. Um, it has a little mounting piece and it just clamps together, normal stuff. And then you can adjust like side to side. And this just actually screws into the light itself down here on the two mounting points. So basically, you can just mount it in right there. Well, obviously, in my case, it would be mounted like this. And then I can kind of swivel it up once I get it in place. And uh, that's pretty much how it's gonna sit. So two side by side if you're riding at night or whatnot. For my case with the light bar, this thing's gonna be probably too bright. I wouldn't even have to run probably three lights. I probably could get away with just the, the two. And I guess we'll fire the bike up, see if my wiring uh, works. You see, typically when you kick it over, you see it kind of flicker. Like that, so I know that's working. So All right, so I got the light to work without the bike running. I just got a little mock up. Took the impact over here, took the battery out, and I hooked up sketchily right there because I couldn't figure out how to wire it right here. But you, now you guys can get an idea on how bright this light actually is. And uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, if you had another one, it'd be twice as bright. But based on that, if I turn these lights off really fast, I'll show you guys kind of roughly how bright it is if I turn these main lights off too. I need a little step stool because I can't really reach it from here. As you can see, this thing is pretty, actually that surprised me how bright that thing is. Like you could almost put this on as a little pod light on a truck or something, I feel like, and it would brighten up the road like perfect, but it's a nice LED, super bright light. Here's a back view. To be honest, that one little light, I think it's brighter than my light bar, to be honest. So if I, had, I might actually keep these for myself now and wait till uh, next winter time when I go to, like when I ride in the winter, if I end up getting um, a snow kit for it, I kind of bailed out on getting a snow kit for it this year because we didn't have a lot of snow and it was almost, winter was almost over by the time everything was set in stone, but next year, maybe, if this thing's still running, we'll have a snow kit on it, but let me know down below in the comments what you think. And uh, yeah, I'd highly recommend this so far. I'd definitely run this on my bike. So like I said, check it out, link down below. Just for the heck of it, I actually hooked up both of the lights side by side so you can get a better view. <laughs> I had to take the bar pad off though for them to actually fit, but I could kind of, if you really had to cut the bar pad, you can get them to both fit if you really wanted to. The thing is so bright. Like, what do you guys think now? Post your comment down below. These things are like stupid bright. So if you guys want some bright lights for your pit bike, motorcycle, ATV, go-kart, whatever, these are definitely the lights to get. And if you had a little mini light bar like this, like mine too, you'd have too much light. All right, now that the pit bike's done, I put the bar pad back on, got these lights um, put back away. Um, here's the brand right here if you wanna look up this specific brand. If you're gonna get into the 250, I'm going to uh, pop off this front wheel and then I'm gonna use this Risk Racing Fork Seal Doctor tool. Hopefully um, stop my fork seals from leaking. So I, I have new fork seals over there. I mean, it's just preventative. If this works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And I can't stand not having very, very good front brakes. I like them like, you literally touch it and it like locks up almost. Versus now it's like really mushy and almost if your brakes weren't bled. But because you can tell when you wash it, when it gets a fresh rotor and whatnot, it gets all that oil off. Then it's really, really snappy. So I gotta take it off, clean the rotor, make sure the oil doesn't leak anymore. That's the whole reason why my brakes are crap, but I'm gonna jump into it. do 
do is you're just gonna pop down the first little seal here. You can use whatever you want. I use just kind of a little flat head, thin flat head. Slide this seal down a little bit. Then you're gonna take your fork seal doctor, take it off the, uh, the little thing here. And then um, all you're gonna do, clip it on, push it up, and basically just spin it around. There's gonna be a little bit of oil that comes out. And spin it around and take it out. You can feel it kind of go in, you'll know when it sets in. On my seal in particular, you can see like a bunch of dirt and stuff built up right here. That's probably one of the causes. You should be good. Get this one back up, press it back in there. Now, considering I can pretty much grab the fork and push it up with my hand, yeah, that's not good. It doesn't even take really that much force either right here. And then if I grab the other one and try to do it, could barely push it. I could almost push it all the way up through the stroke, pretty much. I'll probably gotta add oil to it, I'm sure. All right, same thing for this seal. Just pop down. And we're good. Take out the brake pads, some sandpaper. Open them up a little bit. Try to get some of that wrap off. And uh, see if they work any better. I mean, these pads are pretty much brand new. Might have to replace them because they might just shot because they kind of might have absorbed all that shock oil and that's probably the main reason why they're not snapping, why they squeak like that and they don't lock up anymore. Um, we'll sand them down and we'll see, uh, we'll see how they work, I guess, before I place an order for some new pads. Well, first little test here. They seem to be working a lot better. I tested it out before I um, turned the camera on, but for the most part now, the real test is when I ride it tomorrow and uh, really test it out from riding it. But for the most part, before it would squeak and it wouldn't really grab that good. So I'll so tighten everything back up and uh, call it a night. I think it's like 11.30 now. I'm just try I spent so much time in those valves trying to button that thing up. Probably like an hour and a half, I feel. You watch like a 10 minute video, but like that video took me six hours to actually film and you watch 10 to 15 minutes of that six to seven hour day. So update on the 125 and how that's coming along and whatnot and what else I still need, what I'm waiting on, and um, kind of the time frame on that thing. Okay, that thing's all buttoned up now. Coming on to some of the parts for the 125. Um, I ordered some little miscellaneous stuff on eBay, some little bling blue stuff, some little things for the wheels. Um, I ordered this grip tape for the frame but I might not actually use it because now that I think about it, it's gonna wear off so easy and I might just get some carbon fiber um, frame guards and then have to trim the one guard because of the conversion kit, the little bracket on the conversion kit sticks out from the frame. So I'll just have to trim a little bit of the carbon fiber and I think the carbon fiber will look 100 times better than a grip tape that's gonna be worn out. And ultimately, I just don't want to um, wear into that powder coat and then have to get the frame repowder coated and it look really junky after like a couple of rides So I'm probably not even gonna throw these on there like I said and just um, wait for the carbon fiber uh, Frame guards to come in. Um, I got some new uh, Swing arm bearings because those were shot when you took them out They literally fell apart in a thousand pieces all the little needle the little bearing whatever things fell out so had to order those, and then I also got new uh, steering stem bearings, which are right here. I just opened it to make sure it was the right piece, but some new steering stem bearings for the 2010 forks for that, because those were shot, and then I got another um, seal, or the seal that I didn't get for the case that I've been waiting on to go in there. So I got that seal, that should be good. And then I have new head um, washers and nuts, and uh, some miscellaneous little OEM stuff um, that I ordered. but. The hold up on this, I'm probably going to do this in the next day or two once I um, figure out the truck situation and wait on the parts for that and after that um, video comes out. But um, some of your comments that I've read, I'm going to actually fire up the grill, put it in the grill over there, let them heat up, and uh, that way the bearing, without having to use the torch and literally using the torch for 10 minutes straight trying to heat this thing up. So I'm going to put it in the grill maybe like 250, 300 degrees, and then uh, the crank bearing should fall right in along with the crank itself has is still in the freezer it's been in the freezer for the past like five days so but that thing will definitely be cold along with the crank bearings um these are the um wrench rabbit whatever the pivot i don't know what crank bearings these are whatever the crank bearings that come with a wrench rabbits kit i didn't use but the oem bearings that are in the freezer they actually like these um cheaper crank bearings not oem crank bearings feel smoother 
than the OEM crankbank for some reason. I don't really know why, but these ones feel a little bit smoother. I'm not going to use them because uh, OEM is always better. I should have went OEM with the crank and everything, but um, we'll see how long this Wrench Rabbits kit holds up. And uh, if I screwed myself over in the long run, which I probably did screw myself over, but I mean, I guess we'll know. See how long it lasts. Probably not going to last too long, but hey, it is what it is. I'll hopefully get a season out of it. And uh, still waiting on the um, piston from Eric Gore. I ordered two piston rings, uh, the bigger gasket, and uh, I'm waiting on that. I'm waiting for the Pro Circuit pipe to come in. Should be in Thursday, along with the Warp 9 wheels. Should be in next week, Thursday or Friday. Still have to pick up the frame from Powder Coat and some of my other, the forks and all the rest of the, the parts that we're getting vapor home, like my swing arm. And uh, yeah, that's a little update on the 125. I would go into detail on some of the more parts that I get in. I just keep stashing them away in there, stashing them away. But all the big reveal going through all the parts and whatnot that I have down there. And uh, along with on the Instagram, I'll make a post on at Project KX125. If you want to follow the build for the KX125, it's just at Project KX125 where I post all the Instagram pictures of what I'm doing before I post the YouTube video. Really nothing I can do. I can't really proceed until I had that seal, which now I can get the bottom end together at least. And then once the, the uh, top end comes in, I can throw the top end together. Uh, that should pretty much button up the motor side. So waiting on the frame, waiting on the wheels, waiting on to pick up the swing arm and all the other parts, and then we'll carry on with this 125 build. I still have these stock wheels that are for sale. If you want them, just DM me on Instagram, at Tyler Monaghan, along with the uh, the forks down there off the 03. So hit me up if you want them, they're for sale. But I'm closing up. Even though this video is probably kind of short, a little update video, this thing took me so long. That thing only took me like 10 minutes, but the pit bike took me so long and it's still not even dialed in yet. I'm gonna have to button it up tomorrow. I might just go ride it tomorrow as is. And uh, you guys will see a pit bike, another pit bike riding video following. So close up, shut these lights off, go edit this vlog, and go to sleep.